Okay, so let, let me just uh, have an overview of what you prepared here. So it was grammar, uh, definite article. Yeah. Definite article, pronunciation, ED, vocabulary, nice. And writing practice and the stories. Oh, it, it's about coffee and grammar. Yes. Yeah. There is no, grammar. grammar is from the last, last week. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, okay. Ah, okay, cool. So let's start here with grammar. Let me scroll back up. And all right, so when should we not use the? Okay. Okay. So last week we talked about this same topic, but I decided to study a little bit more and to really understand this topic. So again, when should we not use the? I put here some uh, um, some situations that we cannot use the article, the definite article the, uh -huh. and the first is we do not use the with name of countries. For example, Germany is an important economic power. Yeah. He's just returned from Zimbabwe. So in that case, we do not use the. Okay. The second, do not use the with the name of languages. Again, mm -hmm. French is spoken in Tahiti. Very good. English, <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> English uses many words of Latin origin. Excellent. This is a hard word too, Latin. Very Latin. nice. Yeah. Okay. And do not use the with the name of meals. Lunch is my favorite meal. I like to eat breakfast early. So okay. in that case, we do not use the. And do not use the with the titles when combined with names. Prince Charles and Queen Elizabeth's son, President Kennedy, was assassinated in Dallas. Okay. Do not use the with professions. Engineering is a well-paid career. Mm -hmm. He'll probably study medicine. Okay. And do not use the with uncountable nouns. Rice is an important food in Asia. Milk is often added to tea in England. And the last case, do not use the with most name of towns, streets, stations and airports. Victoria Station is in the center of London. Can you direct me to Bond Street? Excellent, oh. very good. Uh, Tana, so why is this in red for a particular reason? Yeah, because I didn't know this. Ah, okay. Lunch is my favorite because before I studied this topic, I would say the lunch is my favorite. Ah, ah okay, okay. So, uh, the first one here, I think we talked about this last class. We do not yeah. use the with names of countries, but not all countries. Remember, sometimes we need to use the, do you remember when? I think we talked about uh, When they are part of the name, like the United States? Yeah, when it's a, a group of... When the, the country is a group of something, a group of islands, a group of states, a group of... Uh, the United Kingdom. I don't know if we had examples here. No, but okay. The the Bahamas. The okay. Okay. So this is something. And the other thing I wanted to say is uncountable nouns. Actually, I was going to ask you when mm -hmm. the rule is similar to the uh, rule in Portuguese and when it's different. Because in this case here, it's different. So this is something uh, we should really, really focus on and really pay attention. Because in Portuguese, we would say o arroz, right? Um, and in English, mm -hmm. it's just rice. Same thing here, o leite, milk, just mm -hmm. milk. So this is different. Because, mm -hmm. for example, here, it's the same as in Portuguese. We don't say... Uh -huh. Actually, actually, we do say, right? I don't know. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, it's interesting to compare the rules 
with Portuguese and see when it's the same and when it's different and focus on when it's different because that's when we make mistakes. Okay. Where we make mistakes. Do you have any questions or comments? No, that's it. No? That's it, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so the next one is pronunciation. Yeah, pronunciation again, uh -huh. the easy pronunciation for regular verbs. Mm -hmm. I did the same exercise, I chose some words that I have studied during my lessons and then I searched for the transcription mm -hmm. and classified the kind of easy pronunciation. Mm -hmm. So, extracted. Yes. So, the easy is id because ED comes before the T sound. Mm -hmm. Originated. Originated. The ED comes before a T sound, so it's ID, the pronunciation. Mm -hmm. Energized yes. Z sound because the ED comes before a voiced consonant. Lessened. Uh, the ED comes after. <laughs> after, right? Yeah, I put before, <laughs> but I don't know why. But it's after here. <laughs> I always, uh, I always get confused before, after, before, after. I don't know. But the pronunciation because starts after it starts with. A, yeah. <laughs> so the ed comes after a voice consonant. Yeah. So it's yeah. energized, like I said. Nice job. Lesson decreased. This is very interesting because. Before I have the tendency to say decrease, decrease. Yeah, me too, me too. <laughs> but it's decrease and decrease. then decrease. Yeah, uh huh. I have to try and remember that decreased. Yeah. Lowered. Decrease. In Lowered. Inhaled. Inhaled. Yes, inhaled. Linked. Right. Perfect. Reduced. Uh huh. Produced. Yes. Recommend, rec recommended. Yes, recommended. And walked. Walked. Very nice. Yeah. And for me, the, the only problem for me personally is the same as you, you have because the original verb is decrease. And I tend to say decrease, right? So, mm -hmm. and this last sound is important because it will. Yeah. Uh, uh, define the last sound, so it's not decreased, yeah. but decreased, decreased. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the same as increase, right? Increased. Yeah. There is a group of verbs that follow this pattern. Very nice. Comments, questions. No, oh, that's it. That's I it. think that I am improving my pronunciation of ED. Every uh -huh. day I'm getting better and better. Uh -huh. So, because here you're thinking about why it sounds like this or like that. So probably now when you see a word, it's it's becoming automatic. Is it happening? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. All the time. Uh, mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Okay, so let's see a little more here. Vocabulary. Difference between thinking guess yeah okay i chose these two verbs because always i think oh my god can i use think or can i use guess but let's <laughs> get a look on it so uh -huh. think in portuguese it will be na minha opinion so mm -hmm. the definition is to believe something or have an opinion or idea so mm -hmm. here the k word is opinion, personal mm -hmm. opinion or your pe personal idea. Mm -hmm. So I put some examples. Mm -hmm. I think it is going to rain. I don't think Emma will get the job. What did you think of the film? I think it is important to learn English. So in that case, is, it is a personal opinion or an idea about something about someone. Uh huh. Okay. Nice. Okay. And guess. Guess it will be like palpitar, adivinhar, chutar. Mm -hmm. So the definition to give an answer to a particular question when you do not have all the facts and so you cannot be certain if you are correct. 
Here, yeah. the key word is that you are not certain about something. So, I didn't know the answer, so I had to guess. She guessed the right answer. Mm -hmm. My plane leaves in an hour, so I, I guess it better be going. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is it. Yeah, this, this is it's because sometimes it's clear. The difference is clear. Sometimes it's very close, right? Because mm -hmm. an opinion and a, a guess, né, from Papiti, sometimes they're very, very close. Yeah. I, here, of course, it's not an opinion. The first case, I didn't know the the answer, so I had to guess. I had to think of something, but not in the sense of opinion, right? Mm -hmm. Here's the same. She guessed the right answer, and yeah, yeah. Actually, if you, yeah, it's not. It's a kind of a clear. There is a clear difference here because all these examples here don't involve an opinion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here they do. Nice. Very nice. I guess. So there is that expression. Guess what? GV. Yeah. yeah, and there are many expressions with guess mm -hmm. and with think. Yeah. So they can help us remember that too. Very nice. Yeah. Excellent. Anything else you want to say about this? No, that's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So writing practice. Past and present. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Again, I did the same exercise. I tried tried to write a short test and then rewrite it in the present. So, mm -hmm. two weeks ago, Lucy went to the beach with her family. They had gone by car and it took seven hours to get to the hotel. It was a beautiful building by the shore. First, she went to a walk. After walking for a while, she found some seashells. They were in different sizes and shapes, so she decided to keep some of them as a souvenir. Further, she came across with a starfish, which had been laying on the sand for far from the sea. She stared at it for a moment, wondering how did it get there. The next step, step was go back to the hotel and have dinner. Okay, so let's see the present now and then we'll take a look at the corrections. Okay. Lucy is spending her vacation with her family on the beach. They are staying in a beautiful building by the shore. She's walking around looking for some seashells that she would like to take as a souvenir. She thinks there might be seashells in the most different sizes and shapes. While she's walking, she finds a starfish laying on the sand far from the sea. Now she's going to the hotel. It is dinner time. Okay, great. Very nice. So you used a lot of different words here. That's good. And let's take a look at a few things. Okay, so the first one, let me just put this in bold. Um, two weeks ago, Lucy went to the beach with her family. They had gone by car and it took seven hours to get to the hotel. It was a beautiful building by the shore. First, comma, okay. Because everything before the subject is separated with a comma, like that. Mm -hmm. uh, she went for a walk. For a walk. To, the verb is to go for a walk. Here. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Here, I would just do that. Period after. After walking for a while, like that. Uh, comma, because it's before the subject. After walking for a okay. while, she found some seashells. They were in different sizes and shape, shapes. So, no, no need that comma here. So, she decided to keep some of them as a souvenir. Further, she came across, uh, across something. To come across something, okay? Mm -hmm. She came across a starfish. Okay. Uh, which had been laying on the sand far from the sea. She stared at it for a moment, wondering how... Okay. This is interesting because here you're used to using a question word and making the inversion. Did it get? Mm -hmm. But this only can this can only be done in a question. And here uh -huh. it's not a question, right? So how uh -huh. can we fix this? Do you know? How it got there. Yes, there you go. How it got there. 
Okay, because it's not a question. So you keep the same order as the affirmative. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. The next step was to go. Mm -hmm. To go back to the hotel and have dinner. Very good. So uh, when you write, try to, to separate these connectors here, these expressions that we used before the subject with a comma, like that. Okay. And that's mm -hmm. it, right? Go for a walk, come across something, and this the uh, order of the words here. The next one, let's see. Boat. So Lucy is spending her vacation with her family on the beach. They are staying, I would say here at at a beautiful at a beautiful building uh, by the shore. She's walking around looking for some seashells that she would like to take as a souvenir. She thinks there might be seashells, the most different. Remember that we don't Mm. Realize that it's an adjective. Yes. Sizes and shapes, yes, because these are the nouns, right? Mm -hmm. While she's walking, she finds a starfish lying. Uh, the, the, do you know the difference between these two verbs to lay and to lie? Yeah, lay <laughs> is uh, lie. Is to tell something that is not true. This is one meaning, one meaning of lie. One meaning. Yeah, oh. but there is another one. The, the, mm -hmm. These two verbs have to do with staying in a horizontal position. Okay. But there is a difference. Do you know? Actually, I think that only lie with the first was related to stay on a horizontal position, I didn't the know first? the second. Ah, okay, so both of them, lay and lie. Lay. The difference is that uh, y when you do it yourself, you do it yourself. So, for example, I'm gonna lie down. Eu vou me deitar. Mm -hmm. So, I'm doing the movement myself. And lay is when you do it to something else or someone else. So, for example, I'm going to lay the baby. I'm going to, I'm going, okay, I'm going to lay the baby uh, in the crib. Okay, no berço, vou pôr o bebê no berço. And here, I'm going to lie down. Okay. So, do you see the difference? Mm -hmm. So, in that case, starfish is doing it by itself, so it's the second. Yeah, this is why Google corrected as the second here. So uh, maybe that could be interesting to take a look mm -hmm. because uh, one is irregular, lay is irregular, lie is, are, are both Lay, lay, lay. Yeah, it's nice to take a look at these two verbs. Okay. Okay, when to use lay, when to use lie. And they're talking about the meaning, like not to tell the truth, but the other meaning too. Okay, so it's interesting to, okay. to compare. Now, now she's going to the hotel. It is dinner time. Nice. Very good. Do you have any comments? Um, questions? Uh, the only comment that I have is that I am noting that it's more easy to tell a story using the past tense ah. than present. Ah, I'm okay. getting used to it. <laughs> yeah, because we usually tell a story in the present when it's not quando non caso, for example, something that happened with us a particular mm -hmm. situation that happened with us when it is, for example, a book or a movie. Mm -hmm. Because a book or a movie, they tell a story that didn't happen at a point, a specific point in the past. These mm -hmm. are stories that are uh, eternal. <laughs> you know, they're eternal. You can tell them. 
So because they have this, every time you open the book, it's the same thing, you know, you don't, they don't refer to a specific point in the past. It's different from a, a biography. Okay. So if you're telling, for example, the story of uh, Little Red Riding Hood, you, you can say, uh, Little Red Riding Hood is walking. In this story, she wa uh, her mother tells her to take uh, food, snacks to her grandmother. Mm -hmm. uh, she walks through the forest. She meets, no, she doesn't, right? Um, I don't know, the wolf, I think they do. She meets the wolf, then she arrives at her grandmother's house, then she opens the door, she sees the wolf there, she doesn't know it's the wolf. So I'm telling the whole story in the present. Uh -huh. But when we're telling someone about something that happened with us, something particular that belongs to someone's story, real story, then you use the past. For example, I cannot say uh, it's uh, like, especially because we use the, the, the time expression yesterday, for example. So it's impossible to say yesterday I, I go. Yesterday I go to the supermarket. Because if I say I go, it means regularly. So uh, do you understand? Yeah, I got it. In this case here, if you want to use the present, think of a story. Uh, maybe you could tell something, um, an episode of a, an anime that you have watched or a movie or mm -hmm. something that you have read, you know, but a uh, fictional, I think that could be helpful. If it's fictional, you can use it in the present, you can tell the story in the present. If it's real, true, you should tell in the mm -hmm. past. Okay? Okay. Mm-hmm. And then I think you will understand. I think it's a good exercise to see the difference. Uh, it, and you will probably find it easier to tell the story in the present. But you can tell the story in the past too. You can say, Little Red Riding Hood, uh, her mother told her to, to visit her grandmother. She uh, walked through the forest. She met the wall. She arrived there. So it's optional. Okay? Okay. Right. Very nice. So let's see the stories now. So it's a uh, it's news and levels in a podcast. News and levels. Yeah. Air health in the USA. Hmm. Okay. First, let's check the pronunciation. Okay. Let's <laughs> okay. uh, okay. A recently published study analyzed concentrations of fine particulate matter pollution across the continental U.S. from 1999 until 2015. Industry, power plants, and cars produce... <laughs> yes, produce. <laughs> ...produce these extremely small particles of pollution. They are 30 times smaller than the width of a human hair, and they can be hailed deep into the lungs, which can lead to a variety of health problems. The study found that this type of pollution declined since 1999, but the researchers say that even at levels below the current standard, air pollution linked to an estimated 30,000 deaths. Mm -hmm. One of the study's lead author said that lowering the standard below the current level would likely improve people's health. Oh my goodness. You know that this term here, fine particulate matter pollution, uh, I've I've been seeing this this term so often in the news these days. I one of my students is a a chemistry engineer, and she studies this kind of pollution. So the first time I saw this term was when she was telling me about it in class. And then I started to see this in the news. I, uh, one of my, one of the other students told me about this story here. So it's uh, Newton told me about it today. We were walking, and he mentioned this too. 
Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting. We should really pay attention to this. So, what else can you tell yeah. me, Taina, about this? Okay. Was it was it the first time you saw this term, or had you seen it before? It was the first time. Uh -huh. I it. So, but the topic is very. It's a current top current it topic. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. Okay. All over the world, people are talking about pollution, not only fine particulate pollution, but all kinds of pollution. Mm -hmm. and, and this semester I am studying, uh, I am having a class that can be called like, um, uh, um, environmental, management okay something like that uh -huh. and we study pollution and the rules in brazil that are related to pollution because it's impossible mm -hmm. unfortunately to avoid the pollution so mm -hmm. but brazil and other countries establish some threshold limits that can control the levels of this pollution on the air, on the water, on the soil. Mm -hmm. And this is a very interesting point. Although some, uh, some industries, some companies doesn't, um, doesn't use this threshold or they mm -hmm. pretend that are using it mm -hmm. and this is the most dangerous situation right when yes. this situation is out of control mm -hmm. and you know we feel this in our health like uh, problems in your lungs mm -hmm. uh, for example now is the winter in brazil it's a very dry season there are lots of fires around yes. around the country here in Mato Grosso do Sul and probably in Minas Gerais uh -huh. there are there are a lot of fires mm -hmm. and they are super dry and this is a combination that causes a lot of health problems mm -hmm. and you know yes yeah, yeah it's, it's very uh kind of serious a lot of people have health problems go to the hospital right uh respiratory problems um what is when ah here in the text they say they mention that the study found that this type of pollution declined i remember that the other student that told me this he said i don't believe that it has declined what what do you think do you think it's possible for pollution to decline I don't think so. Problem, probably they are uh, manipulating, manipulating <laughs> the, the, the numbers, <laughs> the, the information, numbers. the numbers. Uh -huh. So it's kind of I will tell people what they want to listen to, right? Uh -huh. I'll tell you that is declining. Even you are looking, you are seeing that it isn't true because oh my god. All around the world, we see the the, <laughs> the consequences. Mm -hmm. Consequences. So it's clear. <laughs> I, I'm not pretending being blind of it. It's true. Just <laughs> stare out of your win of your window, and you will see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that site that you showed me, windy. Every now and then, I open the site. Mm -hmm. And I see because yeah. there, there is a filter for pollution, right? Yeah. Uh, CO, for example. Mm -hmm. By the way, just talking about pollution really quickly here, I want to understand this, since you are studying pollution yourself at college, there is a mm -hmm. filter here that shows CO and CO concentration. Mm -hmm. And look at this. Yeah. What, what, what does this mean? Because this is in the Amazon, look. Mm -hmm. I was wondering about it also this week. Did you see that? When I was making 
in a research to the class, I saw this and I didn't understand. Why? I don't understand. Because what what generates CO? Do you know where it comes um, from? Combustion? Combustion? Uh-huh. And but this is the oh, okay. There are the there is the deforestation in that area, but I can't understand this. I need to study a little bit more because <laughs> yeah, I'll try to find out. Tell me next time because mm -hmm. I I want to know too. I, I thought it had to do with deforestation because mm -hmm. Newton told me a piece of news today. I was horrified. Remember, I think you told me that there was a that the percentual increase in deforestation from May last year in this year, remember? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it had increased in a year. It had increased to more than 250% in a year, deforestation from last year to this year. Newton told me that, I think yesterday, it was deforestation day and they were able to uh, so there is deforestation in Mato Grosso, I don't know where, in, in the Amazon. 200, they, they destroyed, two, again, 270% of the forest in, I don't know, the, the rate was that, in one day. Oh my God. Did you hear that? No, no I didn't. So I don't know if, if it has to do with this. You know, this gas, I, I need you to, to study too. And also about pollution, I was looking in this website and I was searching about clouds to see if there is a storm around the world. Mm -hmm. And I saw a storm near Japan. Mm -hmm. And I go to search about if uh, the storm had hit Japan. And I saw a news about um, a new problem because, you know, Japan suffers with um, a earthquake some 88 years ago that destroyed a nuclear plant. plant. Huh? And, and they, doing this, they have some... Um, Residuals. Let me check here. Residual. Um... Like, it's like trash. Some radio radio uh, ra radioactive radioactive res uh, residues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they are in to and they are planning to throw this in the ocean <laughs> because ah, yeah, they, they don't do that. Uh -huh. they don't have place to put this uh, yeah, kind the of, of of um yeah, let's call it trash i forgot the name the mm -hmm. term exact term they do that they they usually bury this kind of trash under the soil and sometimes mm -hmm. they put it on in the ocean they bury it in the ocean too there is nothing we can do Nothing yeah. because this uh, waste. I'm sorry, radioactive waste. I remember now. Mm -hmm. Forever with us. Forever. Uh, yeah. It will disappear very slowly. It in. Uh, how do you call that place here? That disaster in. Where is it? In, no, not Fukushima, in Slovakia, Poland, uh, not so Chernobyl, Chernobyl, Chernobyl. Uh, yeah. yeah, the the power plant there will, they put a sarcophagus, a protection there, but it will be radioactive mm -hmm. for over 20,000 years, very oh long God. time, yeah, so yeah. we, you know, <laughs> The next generations will have to live in this world together with the mm -hmm. consequences of disasters that people have made now in this, these decades. Yes. So, 
Um, yeah. But this fine particulate matter is something people have been talking about, about a lot. Fine particulate matter. There are a lot of uh, new stories about it. I want to read more about it too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Taina, um, any questions here? New words? The new words are inhaled. Yes, inhaled. Word. And let me see. I think that's it's inhale. Uh huh. Because okay. fine particulate matter pollution, I I don't use it, but I can re recognize what is it. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Okay, good. So let's see the podcast now. Oops. Um, quick and dirty tips. Science. The health benefits of coffee. I yeah. think we've talked about coffee before. You like yeah. coffee, right? Do you like coffee? I love coffee. <laughs> I love coffee. It's one of my favorite drinks. Uh, so tell okay. me what you found out here. So again, this week I chose this, this podcast, Everyday Iceland, to talk about it. And the topic is the health benefits of coffee. Mm -hmm. So as I told you, I am... A, huge fan of coffee. Uh -huh. I drink three to four cups per day mm -hmm. and I would like to talk about my favorite drink. Okay. And we know that coffee, it's a very popular drink around the world. People from different countries drink it and the consumption of this drink is expected to increase over the next decade. So. Mm -hmm. We must be prepared for the demand. Uh, however, the climate change again mm -hmm. uh, is a, a threat to the coffee crops. And this, of course, can lead to a coffee shortage. Uh, okay. Just, just one thing here, mm -hmm. just to, to separate the two words. So here's treat and the word you treat. want. And you said threat. you pronounced threat, okay? Mm -hmm. With the age here. Yes. And here can lead. Without the yes. All right. Yeah, that's true. Uh, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there is this problem that we we will face in the future. And but now let's talk about the science behind a good cup of joe. I like mm -hmm. this expression, cup of joe. Cup of joe. Oh. Yeah. I remember there is a, a blog that I used to follow. The name it's cup of joe. Cup of joe. Joe. Just to show you, where is oh this one here? A cup of Joe. It's because the blogger's name is Joanna. Ah. <laughs> it's a cup of Joe, Joanna. Uh huh. And okay, let's look into the process. Mm -hmm. So we know that it's necessary to extract the chemicals from the tiny bee of cup bean of coffee. And these chemicals are responsible to the taste and the aroma. Mm -hmm. But the process to extract the, these chemicals uh, evolve, engage, evolve, evolve. evolve. Uh, three, the two process. The first is that we need to green the beans and then roast the beans. Uh, I think it's grind, 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 grind. Uh -huh. right. Grind and roast, them. and roast them. For uh, we grind the beans to increase the surface area. So with more surface wet area to react with the water, it is more easy to extract the chemicals. Uh -huh. And this water is a uh, hot water. We heat the water mm -hmm. to give more energy, and, and then consequently to speed up the process. Uh, the removal of the molecules from the coffee. Mm, okay. And we also know that different kind of coffees are prepared in different ways. So mm -hmm. here I put some two new expressions, brewing time and drip coffee. Uh -huh. Brewing time is the time of preparation, how much time it will take. 
And drip coffee is a kind of coffee that probably our grandma used. Actually, I did it until uh, nowadays also. Until recently. Yeah, drip coffee. I like drip coffee. Uh, uh -huh. It's more <laughs> traditional. Uh -huh. And uh, espresso machines, they are modern. They produce the drink more faster, mm -hmm. faster, more fast, and they can reach 15 atmosphere of pressure. So uh -huh. it's a very mechanical process. Okay. And now, Let's know about the reasons to drink coffee. Mm -hmm. So in the podcast, the host to tell told about six reasons to drink coffee. Okay. But first, she did a, a introduction about coffee, and this is the same st st story that yeah. I told you. So, class before the. I remember, but you can tell me again. <laughs> okay. Uh, how the coffee was discovered. Mm -hmm. So, the legend legend is that a herder, goat herder, um, notes that his goats became more energi energized when they eat the beans and they also had troubles to sleep so mm -hmm. they became more energized mm -hmm. and then uh, the herder goes to a church and tell about the magic beans to a <laughs> nun and she made a drink and the nuns drink the coffee and voila <laughs> everybody like it yeah, everybody starts to drink coffee like crazy after that. Yeah. <laughs> and here there are the six reasons to drink coffee, the benefits. Mm. First, coffee lowers the risk of developing Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you drink four to five cups of coffee per day, first, you can reduce the risk of developing the Parkinson's disease, but it can also lessen the effects of the disease among those who already had it. So uh, already have it. People who have it now, if they drink coffee, it can decrease the effects, lessen yeah. the effects of the disease. Mm -hmm. So yeah. have, right? Have. Yeah, okay. Five and four to five cups per day. Five. Okay. And the second, coffee offers protections from type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. Okay, for to get this protection, you need to drink more than three cups. And if you did it, the risk will reduce by 50%. Wow, which is a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And third, coffee lowers rates of depression. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, she told about a study in the US and she uh, told all the tales, but I just put here the main point mm -hmm. that drinking coffee can reduce the risk of developing depression. But interest oh, this word is impossible. Interestingly, interestingly enough, <laughs> interestingly. Uh, other caffeine caffeinated caffeinated yeah. beverage. Uh -huh. Like ahead. sodas are more likely to increase depression than rather than combat it. So, in, if you are drinking Coca Cola, mm, the caffeine will not help you. It's yeah, different. Maybe, it, maybe because of the sugar, right? Yeah, probably. There are a lot of uh, unknown substance uh, chemicals in this yeah. kind of drinks. Yeah, definitely. Look at that. Caffeinated, mm -hmm. caffeinated, caffeinated. Okay. Mm -hmm. These words are difficult. The other one is caffeine. I think it's caffeine. caffeine. I confuse it. Caffeine, caffeine, caffeinated. Okay. Okay. And the fourth, coffee is a great source of antioxidants. Antioxidants. 
antioxidants, okay. Antioxidants, which help our bodies combat cell damage, okay. And fifth, coffee lowers the risk of liver damage, okay. And sixth, coffee protects against heart diseases. Ah, so it helps a lot the body, <laughs> right? Yeah, let's drink coffee. Let's drink But coffee. <laughs> We have to know that it depends on, on the uh, things that you put in your coffee. For example, if you put a lot of sugar or some cream mm -hmm. you know, in your coffee, it will be like more a bomb. bomb? bomb <laughs> yeah, a uh, caloric bomb. Yeah. Just And, uh huh. I think that I a black black coffee is right the black coffee black coffee yes maybe just a little bit of sugar it's enough I don't like too much sugar in my coffee yeah depending on the type of coffee I drink without the sugar but sometimes mm -hmm. if the coffee is not very good I, I put a, a little bit of sugar mm -hmm. I'm just putting the date here today is the 15th Uh, Tana, just let me just go scroll down there. Here and here. Okay, so uh, okay. yeah, we shouldn't drink uh, more. Mm -hmm. Okay, there are two more common varieties of coffee trees: Arabica and Robusta, uh -huh. and but. There are also negative effects of coffee. Mm -hmm. As I told you, if you exaggerate or you uh, put too much uh, sugar and cream, something like that, uh, it will be not that good. So it is recommended recommended yes. to not exceed three to five cups of coffee. So depending on your brew of choice. Okay, and too much coffee and this caffeine can lead to anxiety, increase heart rate and lack of sleep. Yeah, <laughs> you But, should pay attention on the side of pay attention on the signals of your body. Uh huh. Yeah. Pay attention to what's happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what? It's funny because Newton, he usually has a migraine, which is a very strong mm -hmm. headache. And he thought that the reason he was getting the migraines was the coffee. So, and I was drinking coffee with him too. He loves coffee, loves coffee. And then we stopped drinking coffee. It was very difficult. To, it's difficult to stop because after you start drinking regularly, You kind of get addicted, and when you try to stop, at least in my case, I got a lot of. I, I felt very weird, you know, and uh, got a lot of headaches because I was trying to to stop. But we stopped for a while. Uh, mm -hmm. But then he Newton realized that he was having migraines even without the coffee. So he said, "Oh, it's not the coffee." And <laughs> now he's back to <laughs> back to the coffee, drinking it again. But I think it's important to know what the effects on your body are. Like you said, observe the signals, right? Mm -hmm. uh, each organism is different, to, so see how much coffee you can drink per day. Um, and try to find a balance, not exaggerate. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe not avoid completely unless you don't like it, right? Unless it's a drink you, uh, you don't like. But I like coffee, but... Um, I need to drink very little. I cannot drink a lot of it. Very nice. Yeah. Just uh, one thing that I was going to mention here, Tana, is uh -huh. when we, the preposition, okay? Uh -huh. Remember that after preposition, we need to add ing to uh -huh. the verb. So risk of developing. Okay. okay? okay. Uh, all right. So anything else you want to say about coffee? No, that's it. The, the vocabulary, the new words. New words, uh, Drew, Drew, Drew. okay, Drew. Oh, no, the, and Brew, right? This one here, the the Drew. way to produce, how we prepare, the brew of choice. Uh -huh. Yes. 
And drip coffee. Drip coffee, nice. Coffee. The new. Very super. good. Uh, okay, here is the list of effects. Reasons to drink coffee, negative effects, nice. Uh, Andy, I think that to, to finish here, I would uh, talk a little bit about pronunciation. Maybe we can practice a little okay. bit more here. Ah, no, what I wanted to do, I remember now, is to try to identify what you studied here, the use of the. So, let's pick mm -hmm. a... We can even use your article here and see how the appears. So the is a very common word in English. Yeah. Right? So let's mm -hmm. only let's work with just the first paragraph. Tell me why uh, the was used in the situation. So the first one. The practice. The practice of because drink coffee, it, mm. drink coffee is a specific specific kind of practice of drinking coffee. Yes. Okay. And as the fifteenth century again is a specific yes. point. Yes. In the time. centuries. Uh huh. And although the growing the coffee. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's used to specify everything, right? So the mm -hmm. growing, the growing. The, uh, the growing, the coffee plant, blah, 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 the power of coffee, the herder, mm -hmm. the plant. So we use it to specify yeah. things. But for example, why don't we use the here? Because in Portuguese, it will be o café, right? Mm -hmm. And here, we didn't use it, why not? Coffee because it is an uncountable noun. Yes, uncountable noun. Yes. Okay, let's see something else that you practice. Oh, words ending in ed. So control F, ed space. Let's see the pronunciation of these words. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. First, originated, realized, yes, noticed. Noticed, energized, noticed. energized, energized, uh -huh. uh, showed, compared, lessened, excellent, decreased, increased, decreased again. Okay, caffeine, caffeine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is caffeinated, 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 mm -hmm. caffeinated, and linked. Reduced, associated, linked, lowered, increased, whipped, whipped, uh -huh. and created. Yeah, I can say I think that you have mastered the pronunciation of the E at the end of the words. So you, like you said, you feel you feel it's easier now, right? So it's more yeah. natural. Mm -hmm. Nice. I don't. I, uh -huh. I don't need to think too much. How to say yeah. it? I just yeah, I like this kind of practice that that you decided to do. That is to focus on something for a few weeks, a few classes, maybe a month, mm -hmm. to get the hang of it, right? Because now you, I see that you feel more comfortable with this, and it's worthwhile to do that, right? To spend some time practicing one thing, and this is very important, very very mm -hmm. important. Excellent, Anna. So I guess it's that's it for today. Great job, fantastic job, actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I hope you have a great weekend, a great week, and I'll see you next time. Okay. See you in the next class. Bye. Bye bye.